so what was the question again? Oh, wait, why is it called the traffic jam? Well, you know, the reason is it's because I have two really cool cars. Seriously cool cars. And I love drifting, racing, <clears throat> because I am fast and slick. And plus, I like to create a bit of traffic jam myself with a whole lot of great music. Burumanaka, my name is Real, your host and DJ, right here on the Today FM Traffic Jam, every weekday from 3 pm to 7. Right here on Today FM, today's hit music. <laughs> Tonight, Prime Minister Borenge Mbani Marama sworn into office as Fiji's democratically elected leader. Electoral Commission announces names of 50 parliamentarians. And Fijian Elections Office says it delivered the best elections possible. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and this is FBC News. Fiji First Leader Vorenge Mbani Marama has officially become the elected Prime Minister of Fiji, taking his oaths of office this afternoon. He was sworn in by President Ratu Epeli Nailatikau as Fiji's Prime Minister at Government House in Suva this afternoon. Mbani Marama took his oath of allegiance administered by the Secretary to Cabinet. I, Josiah Vorenge Mbani Marama, swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Republic of Fiji according to law, and I will obey, observe, uphold, and maintain the constitution of the Republic of Fiji. So help me God. More than 150 government delegates, foreign diplomats, and invited guests were present to witness the swearing-in ceremony as Mbani Marama took his oath for due execution of office. I, Josiah Murenge Mbaini Marama, being appointed as Prime Minister, swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Republic of Fiji and that I will obey, observe, uphold and maintain the constitution of the Republic of Fiji and all other laws of Fiji. And I solemnly and sincerely promise to hold my office with honour, dignity and integrity to be a true and faithful counselor, not to divulge any secret matter entrusted to me, and to perform the functions of my office conscientiously and to the best of my ability. So help me God. Other cabinet ministers are expected to be sworn in tomorrow. At the end of the 2014 elections, Fiji First has secured 32 seats in parliament. Its list of successful candidates is as follows. Party leader and Prime Minister of Urenge Mbaini Marama, Ayasaid Kayum, Pravin Bala, Ratu Inoke Kumbombola, Dr. Mahendra Reddy, Ruveni Nandalo, Piyoti Kunduondua, Choweli Dawaki, Osea Nangamu, Sanjit Patel, Bridge Lal, Timodi Natuva, Viam Pile, Dr. Chiko Luveni, Inia Serui Ratu, Lona Eden, Balmindar Singh, Vijay Nath, Semi Koroi Lavesao, Chiochi Kondrote, Samuel Vunivalu, Dr. Neil Sharma, Netani Rika, Alifareti Nambulivo, Mary Vuniwanga, Alvik Maharaj, Rosie Sophia Akbar, Chone Usumate, Ilya Sandelana, Ashnil Sudakar, Fayaz Koya, and Vina Kumar Bhatnagar. It's expected that cabinet ministers will be sworn in tomorrow. The Social Democratic Liberal Party has won 15 seats and will make up the bulk of opposition in Parliament. Its parliamentarians are as follows. Rote Mumukepa, Niko Nawaikula, Nangama Lalambalavu, Moses Nredala, Viliama, Viliame Tangivetawa, Anare Vandei, Viliame Ngavoka, Semesa Karvaki, Suliano Matanitomboa, Ratuselo Sela Nanovo, Kini Viliame Kirikari, Iso Tikoda, Salote Ranronro, Aseri Ranronro, and Chiosefa Ndula Kiverata.
The Social Democratic Liberal Party refuses to accept the election results, however, will go into opposition when Parliament sits after eight years. Sadal Palita Rote Mumukepa says their first order of business will be to call for an investigation into the election. Sadal questions the election results based on credible evidence. We will move at the first opportunity a motion to create a bipartisan, independent, parliamentary public inquiry so that all the irregularities and aspects of the conduct of the elections can be investigated and the public given the opportunity to come forward to give evidence. Rote Mumu says this will be the first test of transparency and accountability for the Mbani Marama government. Delpa will take up its position in the opposition and make sure that the government of the day no longer avoids being accountable to the people as they have done for the past eight years. The Social Democratic Liberal Party will make up the majority of the opposition in the new parliament having won 15 seats. The National Federation Party says it respects the verdict of the people who've elected Fiji First to rule for the next four years. Congratulating the Baini Marama government, NFP leader Biman Prasad says his party looks forward to joining parliament, stressing they'll be effective despite their small numbers. Ritika Pratap reports. National Federation Party leader Biman Prasad, President Tupo Dronindalo and candidate Prem Singh have made it into the parliament. It is a matter of some pride that the NFP is back in parliament with three seats. Every party contests the elections to form government, and the NFP was no exception. But we are pleased that a party written off by many has performed credibly and won three seats, largely through the efforts of team NFP. The National Federation Party returns to parliament after 15 years, and even though the party has won only three seats, it says it will continue to push on issues it campaigned on. We will criticize government policies, not just for the sake of doing so, but provide credible alternatives as well. And at the end of four years, we will once again appear before the people of Fiji and be judged on whether or not we have performed effectively as a party, both in and outside Parliament. Legislation uh, is what will be debated in Parliament, and we hope to have a positive input as uh, the NFP did uh, make an uh, input uh, when they were in Parliament. So we look forward to continuing the work that NFP used to do when it was in Parliament. The party is expected to meet with the Social Democratic Liberal Party members soon, since they will be sitting in opposition together. Talking to all members of Parliament uh, and all members uh, who would be sitting on the opposition benches, uh, in the next few days, of course, we will be looking at the logistics of um, how uh, we will proceed with the work that uh, opposition party members are required to do. And we do hope that um, the uh, resources that the opposition parties will have in parliament from government uh, will be appropriate uh, so that uh, we can be an effective uh, opposition in parliament. NFP President Biman Prasad Siki with 8,097 votes, Tupo Dorindalo had 2,966 votes and Prem Singh managed to get 1,125 votes. Pratika Pratap, FBC News. The 2014 general elections will record one of the lowest percentages of invalid votes in Fiji's electoral history, 0.75%. Supervisor of Elections Mohamed Sanim says this is their biggest achievement. Of the total 4,496,364 votes received in this election, there were 3,714 votes that were not counted. These were the invalid votes, which is 0.75%. I believe this, this is reservant of an applause for the whole of Fiji. I guess as they always say, and this has been proven, the overall winner in this election are the electors. 
So bravo Fiji, well done. Declaring the polls closed, Sanim paid tribute to the people that made the elections possible. All the voters for turning out in numbers, for taking us to 83.9%, I will say 84%. Um, and I would also now, I'd like to acknowledge the hard work done by each and every member of the Fijian Elections Office. Some of them are present here, most of them are watching from home. Ladies and gentlemen, you have done Fiji proud. We have, we have proven that a new set of people with new ideas have the ability to perform, to give a better service, to give service to the nation beyond what the nation expects. So big vinaka vakalevu to all of you. After the break, one Fiji party says the polls were a chance to prepare for elections 2018. How are you doing, Fiji? Yes, indeed, fast approaching. Well, the major bulletin. But before we even talk about the major bulletin, what about my little news flash? Oh my gosh, please don't let me get started on that again. Getting on the bus yesterday, and then he tells me, brother, move on to the other seat. Because we can fit two people where you're sitting. <laughs> hey, you can't blame the dude for being honest, okay? <laughs> There's nothing honest about what he said. Hi, I'm Pippin. And I'm Fina. Your daybreak duo on Gold, Gold FM. FM. From Mondays to Fridays. From 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Turn us on. <laughs> Welcome back. This is FBC News. The One Fiji Party says the 2014 general election was a learning curve for the new political movement. General Secretary Siti Venikolo says they came across many ups and downs but are overwhelmed with the overall result. Shireen Lata reports. One Fiji received 5,839 votes. General Secretary Siti Venikolo says they will make improvement over the next four years to have a better run in the next election. We definitely have lessons to learn from this experience. As you would be well aware that um, we basically had to hit the ground running. We were the last to register and right on the eve of the election. Uh, it was a good experience for us. We hope that uh, through the experience uh, we'll be able to take lessons and uh, improve on things as we move forward. One Fiji accepts the election results and has congratulated the winning parties. Kalo says they aren't going to wither away in the next four years. We will uh, take time to regroup, we'll uh, analyze the results and uh, we'll uh, plan our way going forward. Uh, we see ourselves as a part of the future. We will uh, look at strengthening our membership, strengthening our presence in uh, future elections and also in participating in nation building. The One Fiji Party being the newest was probably the most unknown. The party managed to secure 1.2% of the total votes cast in this election. Sharin Lata, FBC News. Unionists Atar Singh, Pramod Rai and Felix Anthony didn't win any seats in Parliament following the announcement of the 2014 general election. The three candidates had to resign from their unions to stand for elections. National Federation Party candidate Pramod Rai says he's disappointed with the votes, but he respects the decision of voters. Rai says he is not likely to get reappointed to the union because he's already resigned. Atar Singh could not be reached and PDP leader Felix Anthony is expected to give a statement on Thursday. Atar Singh got a total of 716 votes, Pramod Rai received 217 votes and Felix Anthony had 1,879 votes. The multinational observer group has concluded its formal on-the-ground observation of the 2014 Fijian election. In a press statement, MOG says they will remain available to receive submissions from organizations and individuals in the election pro process. This option will be open until the publication of the final report, which will be issued to the Fijian government and the Fijian elections office. MOG coordinator Andrew Galetzi Sorry, Goled Zinoski says they're currently seeking statistics from a range of government and independent organizations. 
This includes the Fijian Elections Office, the Electoral Commission, the Media Industry Development Authority, the Fiji Independent Commission Against Corruption and the Fiji Police Force. The full MOG report is expected to be finalised next month. There is anticipation of a boom in business when Parliament sits within the next two weeks. Works on the Parliament complex nears completion. Rashika Kumar has more. Government building dates back to the 1930s and holds a historical significance. The building houses the Prime Minister of Fiji's offices, the High Court and the Government Ministries. Opposite the Government Building is a 20-year-old establishment. The Albert Park kiosk, which looks to benefit the most out of the relocation of the parliament. Others are also anticipating the much awaited parliament sitting. The former parliament complex had a sitting for 71 members of parliament. Parliament was held at the government building until the 1987 coup. The new complex is being funded by the government and the UNDP. Rashika Kumar, SBC News. We have sports next and here's Jamie with the latest. Good evening. Coming up in sports, Ben Ryan names four new players in the national sevens team for the Gold Coast next month. This and more after the break. Hello guys, I am DJ Krish Neel. You can listen to us in Mirchi FM Raftar, Monday to Friday, from 3 to 7 o'clock, we will rock you. Mirchi FM, it's hot! Welcome back to FBC Sports. Four players will make their debut for the Vodafone National Sevens team at the Gold Coast Sevens in Australia next month. Minor injuries and lack of form has seen national coach Ben Ryan drop some big name players ahead of the opening leg of the World Series. Tali Ndadakadaka reports. Ben Ryan's lineup for the upcoming Gold Coast Sevens features several old hands as well as four new faces. The Englishman is standing by his decision to drop the halves combination of Waisea Nadungu and Watemo Rabobo in favour of Eminoni Nasilasila and Emosi Mulaboro. Uh, Eminoni um, pushed Nathungu and Ravuvu out of the squad. Um, he's winning all the fitness. He did very well in the um, world clubs in Ireland, uh, winning with Davetta, and I'm picking on form. Uh, he's he's uh, Weiss and uh, Vatimo. Um, need to be fitter and uh, until they do that then you know they're, they're going to be up against it especially when the opposition Kulinisau and Nasila Sila are our top two on the fitness charts. Veteran forward Pio Tuwai misses out after failing to recover from an injury sustained during the Ovalau Sevens. Aisake Katunimbao and Apsalome Wangatambu have been recalled to the squad to add some spark to the back line. If I was to give you uh, one word that I hope by the end of Gold Coast um, they typify is uh, uncompromising. We've got hard edge to this team. We've got players that are leaders that want to go forward. And I know we're going to have some hard battles against teams that are more resourced, are better prepared. The squad will march back into camp on Thursday at the Uprising Beach Resort. Ryan has only two weeks to get his combination right before the opening leg of the World Series. Talen Dodakadak, FBC Sports. Basketball Fiji held a statistics training with the International Basketball Federation over the weekend. The training is in line with preparation of the FIBA Under-19 Championships later this year. Josephine Avula has the details. 
Building up to the Oceania Championships, volunteers last week showed up for the training on updating statistics on live games. Australian volunteer for international development, Catherine Growich, says the training is a good learning experience for the volunteers. Volunteers also did a practical on the theories they are taught during the training. Volunteer Leah Seru says the training has helped her a lot. New South Wales coordinator in basketball, Patricia Nichols, conducted the training that ended on the weekend. Josephine Nabula, FBC Sports. That was your sports for tonight. It's back to Jackie now with business. <laughs> The Fiji Sugar Corporation is still looking for a better price for its raw sugar currently being exported to Tate and Lyle Refinery Company in London. Corporation Executive Chair Abdul Khan says that all the raw sugar for this crushing season has been sold. According to the contract, another 90,000 tonnes of raw sugar will go to London. Khan told FBC News that over the past three years, the corporation has been continuing to look at other sugar buyers. However, Tate and Lyle is ready to match the price of other potential buyers. Taking a look at today's centers, I'll assume in South South we have fair conditions and cloudy skies all throughout the day. And uh, whereas the rest of the centers, major centers, Nandi Loto Kamba and also Lambasa, all had fine weather all day. Now with the temperatures, Suva 28, Nandi Lambasa 32, Lotoka 31, Bain Savu Savu with 30. Today's forecast, Savu Savu and Suva might have fine weather with cloudy skies all day. And as for the rest of the centers, should have fine weather all throughout the day. Mariners forecast, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots and moderate seas. This image of the day, beautiful day out at the beach courtesy of Leon Whippy. Another very interesting fact I bet you did not know. Every minute of the day, around 900 million tons of rain falls on the earth. That is pretty cool. It is. Thanks so much for that, Trish. And this is the end of our FBC elections coverage. Over the last six days, we've tried to bring you the best possible coverage of the general election, and we hope that we've lived up, lived up to your expectations. As we end about a week of special reports, live updates and breaking news, we'd like to thank you, our viewers, for staying with us this week. We'd like to thank all our hardworking crew and staff who helped put this special coverage together. That's all from us tonight. We'll be back again tomorrow evening. Until then, Nimo the Mamba. <laughs>